Uh, welcome to Berlin, Columbia Theater, where I have the legendary Danny Field with me. Greetings. Uh, Kryptoriana tour is well underway, and uh, it's going to be worldwide. Uh, how does the tour been so far? It's been very good thus far. Um, what day is it today? It's. I think we're on day. Day nine, of the tour. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's it's still a little virginal, but we've we've done Poland, we've done the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Leipzig yesterday. So it's underway. It's working well. We're not too tired yet. We're just getting into the stride of it. We've got another six weeks in Europe, then we have six days at home, just six days. And then we go to South America, mainland, North America, Canada, Japan, Australia, Indonesia, the Philippines, and then back and play some shows in England. So a little busy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, how do you feel the uh, live gigs nowadays uh, differ from when you started out. I actually don't... Playing Leipzig last night really brought me back to the origins of the band because we were looking around the venue, which is obviously quite historic, and there were sort of uh, photographs, real photographs, you know, <laughs> old school photographs that have been taken, I think, 20 years ago. Um there were several from a festival and several from this venue that we'd played. And I was kind of reminiscing about the fact that we'd played there and saying to the others in the band who were obviously new to create, not new, but you know, they weren't there 20 years ago. They were, they've, they've been in the band like four years, five years, 10 years collectively, um, that nothing much had really changed, which was a good thing that, you know, we were still selling out a thousand capacity venues nightly that the audience was really into it, except that now, obviously, we've got the advantage of having a back catalogue. We can, that people know, rather than being, you know, playing stuff from a couple of records and people just, you know, not very know much about the band. So I think there's, uh, there's a lot of similarities. I don't think it's changed that much. Music industry might have changed incredibly and for the worse, but the life scenario seems to be fine. Uh, yeah, let's uh, talk about uh, your latest album, Kryptorianum, uh, released uh, last year. Uh, what can you tell us about that album? Uh, what is your uh, description? Well, a lot of people and fans and critics and journalists alike, I did probably about 300 plus interviews for the record around its release. And the general aesthetic, and the opinion was that it was very old school, but with a new sound. And I think that's that marriage is uh, perfectly defines what the record is about. It has all the aesthetics um, of original Cradle of Filth, um, where we were very sort of all about high Gothic horror. Um, Cryptoriana itself, the, the, the title comes from the Victorian age. It's, Victoriana, which is anything to do with the Victorian age, but swapping it around, but so, so it's crypt, it's, it's an amalgam of two words, which implies their infatuation with death and spirituality and a pursuit of trying to breach the, the border between worlds. I mean, back in the day, although the onset of science, were the, you know, it was a real defining moment in, in history, the dark, you know, the darker arts, uh, even things as, uh, you know, the macabre, spiritualism, palmistry, tarot, that sort of thing was considered scientific as well. And obviously you had a Gothic revival back there aesthetically with, with, with art and literature. Um, and so, yeah, I think the, the attraction is not only to the grandiose nature of Victorian London and Victorian England and the Victorian Empire, but their attraction further still with this darker alliance, which, you know, makes a fascinating, fascinating breeding ground for lyricism. Uh, yeah, your stories have always been uh, 
really great on uh, on your albums. Uh, uh, you released uh, Dusk and her embrace uh, the uh, kind of a demo version the, with the name of a original scene in 2016. Well, that was the original album. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, how did that project come to be? It came about because um, our booking agent at the time was actually Paul Ryan, who was in the band, and he suggested making our piece with Cacophonous Records and, re -release, uh, and releasing it. It was never released. In fact, it was completely shelved because the our relationship with Cacophonous Records at the time caused the band to fracture into two halves, uh, with one half going away and forming a completely new band, and the rest of us taking that record company to court and winning the rights to re-record it with a new lineup. Um, but delivering them something in in return, which was the Cacophonous EP, uh, sorry, the Vampire EP for Cacophonous Records. So after all these years, we thought, you know, it would be a good thing to bury the hatchet, otherwise it will never get released. And it was just something really for the fans. Um, and on a similar subject, this year, um, we're going to be releasing a remix, and remixed and remastered from the original tapes version of Cruelty and the Beast, which um, I spent about six weeks thus far. I mean, it, it sounds easy to do, but it wasn't because all the tra tapes had to be transferred to digital. Um, there were some bits missing from the original tapes, which had to be refound. And um, obviously it's a fine line between striking a balance between the atmosphere of the original and making it a more polished, you know, um, better produced record for the current age. So I think we've, we've, we've found that balance. Um, we still haven't quite finished it, but I think, it, I think the fans will think it's quite a, a phenomenal um, release. It's actually the entire album plus our cover of Hallow Be Thy Name. And lots of people say, well, why are you not putting demo? It's like, this is enough. <laughs> it literally is enough. This is, uh, like I say, for a mix, it's already taken six weeks. Um, and uh, we're receiving mixes whilst we're on the road from the producer, um, Scott Atkins, who was also uh, the, the producer um, and engineer for both Cryptoriana and the previous album, Hammer of the Witches. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm being too obvious here because that would have been my next question. Uh, is there's going to be, uh, because, um, you know, Cruelty and Beast is uh, yeah. nearing its uh, anniversary. Well, so, yeah. Well, it's yeah. every year now, it's an anniversary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, is there other projects like that, like uh, uh, the Midnight in Labyrinth or something like that? Or um, what are the future plans? No, not the present. We, as you mentioned before, we're, we're just into the first, second week now of the world tour, which will take us into mid-June. Um, hopefully we'll get that Cruelty album out over the summer. We're only doing a smattering of summer festivals. We're going to be doing some winter festivals, and then next year, to extend the longevity of this album cycle, we'll be doing all the summer festivals. Um, and I guess in the meantime, we'll also be looking toward writing the next record but not not doing it all in one go but taking our time with it because i think we've gone as far as we can go with cryptoriana and we want maybe to experiment a little bit and do something kind of unique with the next album uh yeah um uh, your roots are in black metal of course uh what does black metal mean to you today and has the meaning changed over the years? Um, well, I think the more things change, the more they stay the same. Because when originally black metal came out of the underground, sort of behind grunge, underneath grunge, when metal was being kind of killed off and it, it sprouted from extreme styles of music, be it grindcore or thrash metal or death metal, um, and the rekindling of it, elder ideas um i particularly remember when i was tape trading that i'd be talking to fernando i'd be talking to moonspell lot or i'd be conversing with immortal or mayhem or 
necromantia or and every band had its own essence there was no real defining sound that only came later when people try you know when more bands came involved and people got more attached to this idea of you know looking like upturned badgers and wanting to sound like dart thrown and but back in the day it was highly individualized and i think the bands that have survived are those that are, are highly individualized so i don't think you could actually say well this is black metal you know and i think the bands have taken it and explored it and it's become very organic um and that's how it survived like i think it's just about mutation um but i think now i listen to as much music that's that's just got variety as i always have but it's always dark i always love dark music but um there's all kinds of bands from zeal and Arda to satiricon to alcest you know there a multitude of different bands uh Perturbator, which is, you know, very digital sounding. So, um, yeah, I think the essence of black metal has just spread and found its home in several genres, actually. Uh, you mentioned the mutation of the music, so, uh, but how do you see the evolution of uh, your own band, Cradle of Filth? Um, well, it's hard to step outside and 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 look objectively uh, at the band i think we've just uh evolved through musicianship through longevity um through trial and error through being on big labels been on slightly less big labels um when with sony roadrunner music for nations and now our home is with nuclear blast um i think it's like anything in life it's a journey um And I can't say where we're going to be in five years, but I've never been able to do that. You know, the band's always lived on a precipice of success or failure. And we've been just true to ourselves. And, you know, I think people appreciated that. And obviously we've had our shit in the past with people. And But if you don't like our music, then you don't have to listen to it. And that's that's always been our motto. We write music for ourselves based on what we're into and what we think uh the band should sound like and obviously along the way we've uh accumulated a certain style of lyricism classical sort of mythology and poetry and an amalgam of horror movies and uh high gothic horror i guess the slightly more panache version i suppose rather than uh the sort of gore that comes with death metal um it's very erudite i think um the last record in particular is quite ornate as well uh and we haven't shied away from experimenting in our own way uh yeah you mentioned the journey of the band it's been an amazing and long career already so uh i know this is not an easy question to answer but uh how would you sum up the journey chaos <laughs> it's been <laughs> It's been, it's been a little bit like a, uh, an amusement ride, you know, like a big dipper or something. It's been fun, you know, and I look back on things and think, God, that doesn't seem very long ago that we did that, but it's been, you know, like 15, 16 years. It's been a roller coaster. It's been good. It's been creatively pleasing. Uh, we're very lucky to be in a position where we are, where we can celebrate all the things we like and then and bring them together under the flagship of the band. Um, and we've been a bit selfish in that respect, that we've, you know, done what we wanted. Um, but I think you have to impress a lot of your own mark to inspire individuality, to, to, to get that sound that becomes unique to your own vision. Well, at least I hope so. <laughs> That's, you know what I mean? Uh, you already touched on this. Uh, in the 90s, it seemed that every band wants to be as extreme as possible. And uh, for example, I remember a time when I didn't have the balls to wear a, a Cradle of Field shirt. So uh, how extreme is a Cradle of Field circa 2018? Um, 
I think it's, uh, we've never been overly extreme anyway. We've just done some things that the moral majority would, would cast as being outside of their jurisdiction. Um, and if you're into something that much, then it's never going to follow what is regarded as common law. So there will be things that you will do that, that that's moves outside of that and seems a little bit criminal and seems a bit dangerous. But the majority of the time, I mean, for example, we've always had this backlash from fans that have said, oh, we're a bit too poetic, we're a little bit too um, ornate, too theatrical and not hard enough. Uh, and, and basically you can't really win. I think we're a marriage of two extremes, actually. And I think the subtitle of the album, The Seductiveness of Decay, mirrors that perfectly because it's a juxtaposition between good and evil, right and wrong, black and white, um, and exploring all those facets, love and death, hate and love, etc., etc., black and metal. <laughs> Country and West. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much and uh, all the best for the rest of the world tour. Okay, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.